Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the October 31st Zoom Citra Seminar. Thank you for joining us. First, I would like to thank Arison Walton from the Southwest Florida Research and Education Center in Immokalee for her help and cooperation. Today's program offers one CEU for pesticide license renewal and one CEU for certified crop advisors. If you need CEUs, email me your name, email address, and license number. Today's topic is about management of right. Asian citrus right. salad and I'm interaction with this. citrus pest oh, complex. Okay. The Asian citrus salad was first detected in Florida okay. in 1998. And this will be an hour. It has become the key pest of citrus due to its role as a vector of the citrus greening disease. After the first find of citrus greening disease in Florida in 2005, insecticide used to control the Asian citrus salad increased tremendously. For more than a decade, 12 or more sprays were implemented per year in citrus growth. Management programs should begin by targeting overwintering adult citrus with insecticidal spray when the trees are not producing flush. Elimination of overwintering salad adults greatly reduces populations in the following spring flushes. Additional sprays of insecticides for salads should be made when observing an increase in adult population in a grove. A threshold of one adult salad per 10 tap samples during the growing season has been shown to provide an economically viable level of suppression in mature trees with high incidence of citrus greening. Rotating modes of action throughout the year is important to avoid insecticide resistance and conserve critically needed products. Additional options for an integrated pest management approach, including biological and cultural control. Products, timing, and methods of chemical control and protected citrus production systems will be discussed. Our guest speaker is Dr. Jawad Qureshi. He is an associate professor of entomology at the UF IFES Southwest Research Re Florida Research and Education Center in Al Makari. Dr. Qureshi, please go ahead. Thank you, Manji. Uh, and welcome everybody. Um, today I will talk about the uh, citrus pest management, um, particularly focused on the Asian citrus salad. Uh, citrus crops uh, in Florida are colonized by a wide range of pests uh, and their management relied heavily uh, on the beneficial organisms, uh, predators, parrot, parasites, uh, entomopathogenic fungus uh, uh, for a long time until uh, the Asian citrus salad was identified in Florida in 1998, uh, and particularly uh, followed by the disease Hong Long Bing, which was found in 2005. So from that point forward, uh, chemical control uh, became a necessity to suppress the vector populations uh, and, and chemical uh, uh, spray applications uh, and, and uh, systemic applications uh, increased in citrus production systems. Uh, and at some point, uh, uh, there were up to 12 or more spray applications uh, uh, during the year, uh, although uh, that trend uh, it's, it's slowed down now uh, to almost half of those applications. 
um, uh, in, in, in these uh, recent years. Uh, so today, and we have also uh, moved uh, to some extent, especially for the fresh fruit markets, uh, toward protected production systems, uh, such as uh, individual protected covers or citrus under protective screens uh, to uh, for total protection against the Asian citrus psyllid and Huang Long Bing. So, so I, I will discuss the psyllid management uh, in those uh, scenarios in the traditional uh, open production systems, um, uh, as well as in, in those uh, uh, protected uh, production systems. So I will provide a brief uh, introduction to, to Asian citrus psyllid and Huang Long Bing disease, uh, then talk about its management, uh, some of the work uh, that we have done in the traditional open uh, production systems, uh, both in the mature and uh, young citrus. Uh, and then I will talk about the protected citrus production systems uh, for cellar management and uh, uh, some of the other pests uh, problems that, that uh, we have seen with the with those uh, production systems. Obviously, in the open traditional production systems, as I mentioned uh, in my earlier remarks, that uh, uh, there is a significant uh, contribution of uh, biological control, uh, uh, which we still see, and and that that's one of the reason uh, that we don't see uh, uh, the widespread issues with the with the other. Uh, other pests that we have in the citrus crops, uh, and but but we do see those uh, problems now uh, in the protected system because biological control is limited in those uh, protective systems. And then uh, toward the end, I will uh, conclude uh, pro uh, conclude and and provide my remarks. The Asian citrus salad. Uh, you can see here uh, all the life stages of this insect, the adult uh, eggs and the nymphs. Uh, it feeds on all types of citrus uh, and, and uh, some other hosts such as uh, orange jasmine, uh, which is a citrus relative uh, uh, and, and a good host for, for this insect. Uh, a single female can lay several hundred eggs. Uh, so there are several overlapping generations uh, during the year, and they prefer uh, to lay eggs in newly developing buds and shoots, as you see here on the picture, which says eggs. Uh, so basically, those times are important uh, for these insects uh, to reproduce and increase its populations. Uh, it's economically important, uh, not only because it causes the feeding damage uh, on, uh, on citrus trees, uh, but more importantly, uh, it's vector of the pathogens uh, that cause uh, Huang Long Bing uh, or citrus uh, greening disease. Uh, the impact of, uh, of this disease, the citrus greening or Huang Long Bing uh, uh, is devastating on Florida citrus industry. Uh, since its finding in 2005, uh, you can see consistent decline uh, in, in, the, in the citrus production uh, here in the United States and particularly uh, in, in Florida. Uh, these are some of the symptoms of, uh, of, of the disease. Uh, you will see uh, the yellow shoots uh, in the tree canopies. Uh, uh, that is one of the uh, starting symptoms. And it's also important to remember uh, that those young shoots, as they develop, they are also uh, the focus or the target of the, the Asian citrus psyllid. Uh, that's where uh, the psyllid females uh, lay their eggs, and uh, that's where their young ones mature in a period of about uh, two to three weeks, uh, depending upon temperature. So then and on the top, corner, right corner, you will see uh, a blotchy mottle on, on citrus leaf that's yellowing across the veins. Uh, that is also common to uh, uh, a symptom of this disease. And as it progresses further, 
uh, in the tree, then, then you start to see the additional symptoms of uh, fruit drop uh, within a period of about, uh, I would say two years or so, it, it becomes severe, if, especially if those are young trees and, and you see a lot of fruit drop uh, and, and you see poorly developed uh, fruits uh, with aborted seeds. Uh, it's important to remember that one Asian citrus salad is a source of infection uh, in, in a tree uh, and um, removing one salad uh, uh, from the picture or taking it out uh, by uh, killing uh, an adult uh, means uh, that uh, you are uh, stopping its progeny, uh, which could be three to 500 uh, uh, going into the system. So obviously, uh, our citrus production system uh, in Florida for years, decades, uh, it, it's an open production system uh, uh, with large acreage, uh, both mature and young trees. Uh, and that is more vulnerable because uh, we have the vector and the disease spreading in the state. Uh, therefore, it is critical to manage the vector uh, in, in those systems, uh, including the mature trees uh, for their sustainability, as well as reducing the populations so that less of them are colonizing the young trees to reduce the stress of the vector and the disease in young trees. So then uh, <clears throat> you have probably seen uh, thousands of trees covered with these uh, individual protective covers uh, there are different names for these. Uh, uh, we call them mini cups, uh, tree defenders also. Uh, so they, they, the idea there is to protect those young trees uh, in the initial uh, two to three years of their production uh, from the vector and the disease. Uh, so they are uh, healthy and, and able to tolerate uh, this vector disease complex uh, better uh, compared to if they were not covered uh, in, in the following years. Uh, and then another protective system, uh, which is gaining uh, significance here in Florida, uh, is called citrus under protective screen, uh, where we can grow a large acreage uh, all the way to the production uh, in, in these uh, protected structures. Uh, uh, the idea is uh, to keep Silhouette and the Huang Long being away from uh, those trees. Uh, and right now, uh, I believe uh, 1,000 to 1,500 uh, acres of citrus uh, are, are being planted uh, under uh, such structures. So in order uh, to implement uh, uh, a good management, uh, it's important to understand the phenology of, of, of the crop. Uh, and, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, citrus develops and reproduces in buds and, and young shoots. Uh, and citrus trees, uh, we did this study several years ago, uh, and you see these green bars. Uh, citrus trees uh, go through patterns of uh, flush production. So most of the production is in the spring flush or growth period. Uh, you see the, the bars there in March uh, and some in April as well. And then there are uh, follow-up flushes in, in summer and, uh, and fall. Uh, and then the winter period is generally the time when most of the trees do not produce uh, the new growth. Uh, but obviously uh, after so many years of uh, disease infection and uh, most of the trees being infected. Uh, we have seen uh, that these flight cycles are, uh, are not uh, uh, the same as they used to be and, and citrus trees do produce flush unevenly at, at, at different times uh, of the year uh, as well. But, but these are designated periods when most of the flush is produced. Therefore, targeting uh, the psyllid populations uh, at times uh, before these flushes start in spring or uh, during uh, uh, these flush periods uh, may be options uh, to pro get uh, more suppression out of the spray applications. So soon after uh, 
and the finding of HLB uh, in Florida and, and, the, and the expectation that the insecticide use will increase. Uh, uh, we, we did some studies uh, to show that if hard insecticides like organophosphates uh, or pyrethroids uh, uh, are used during the winter months when the trees are not producing the new growth, so the adults of the ACP or the Asian citrus salad uh, that are uh, surviving the winter, uh, if they are uh, targeted by those hard insecticides, uh, then the populations will be lower in spring and following uh, growing season. Uh, and there we can use the insecticides that are relatively uh, less uh, hazardous uh, uh, and to the insects as well as to the uh, ben especially beneficial organisms and provide opportunities for more uh, sustainable uh, production systems. So this was a proof of concept study and, and please remember that it was done uh, in, in 2007 uh, uh, when chloropyrifos was allowed for use and plus it was an experimental use. Uh, we did make one application of, uh, of the insecticide in January uh, and monitor the effectiveness for seven to eight months into the growing season. Uh, there was no spray application uh, made afterward during this study, uh, just for the proof of concept to show that the dormant season spray application concept uh, works. And you can see here for both nymphs and adults, uh, uh, the dark uh, columns are the one uh, which shows you the populations in the blocks that were treated with that one spray application uh, in January uh, compared to the bars uh, uh, that are for the control. Uh, and you see the huge reductions in, in the cellular populations. Obviously, spray applications are uh, needed during the growing season and, and they, they need to be uh, implemented uh, strategically. So if, if any of you wants more detail on, on the dormant spray application, uh, the, this is a reference uh, uh, to that study, and it was repeated uh, uh, two years uh, with multiple insecticides, uh, and, and the results are, are provided in, in that uh, publication. So then in, in the recent years, uh, we worked with uh, another concept uh, targeting these insecticides to the citrus flushing periods. Uh, these studies were uh, uh, done by uh, or led by Dr. Jean Albrigo. Uh, when he was alive, uh, this proposal was uh, submitted. And uh, so these studies were done uh, uh, here uh, uh, in, in, in a Mockley area, uh, as well as uh, uh, in, uh, in, in Lake uh, Alford area. And uh, I am showing uh, the results here. Uh, today from uh, from this uh, southwest region. Uh, these were huge, uh, large scale blocks of Valencia on Swingle Orange, uh, where uh, sprays were timed uh, to citrus flushing, uh, about 70 acre uh, blocks, uh, and compared to the similar acreage uh, where grower was implemented according to his program. And then uh, there were additional blocks of Valencia on Carrizo Orange, and they were even uh, larger, about 140 acres uh, for the flush time spray and 140 acres for the uh, grower standard. So we collected the data on, on silid adults per tap sample, uh, eggs uh, on the shoots and, and the nymphs on the shoots uh, as well. So here on this slide, uh, we are looking at the adults uh, per sample, per tap sample data. Uh, you can see above in the right corner, uh, the number of sprays that were made uh, uh, in, uh, in both the grower standard and flush sprays. So for the flush time sprays, our idea was uh, to maybe uh, make two sprays during a flight cycle, one at the start of the, uh, uh, bud or, or young shoot emergence and one uh, couple of weeks after. Uh, those were not done exactly due to the logistics uh, involved, but still these sprays uh, were made 
during the flush period compared to the grower standard, uh, which were uh, made according to uh, their program. And, and you can definitely see the huge impact of, uh, of these flush time sprays uh, in, in the both uh, figures shown below. Uh, the orange bar uh, uh, where you see, uh, that's where the flush time sprays were uh, uh, applied. Uh, and the blue bar is the one for the grower standard. And, and you can see uh, huge differences uh, uh, throughout uh, this and the year uh, in the blocks uh, uh, that were uh, spread uh, on the flush, uh, showing very low populations compared to uh, very high populations uh, shown uh, under grower uh, standard program. Uh, on this slide, uh, you don't see uh, the reduction in the spray application uh, uh, in flight sprays or the grower standard. There are almost equal number of sprays, but in 2020, there was a difference of two sprays. Uh, uh, we made two sprays less compared to the grower. So there were the growers made eight applications and we made six applications and the effects were uh, somewhat similar for the time. I am showing just uh, one year of, uh, of data here. So those effects on the adults, uh, you can see those translated here uh, on the eggs as well. Again, huge differences, uh, very low number of eggs uh, in the blocks where the sprays were made to the flush uh, compared uh, to the grower standard, the blue bar, uh, where the number of eggs uh, in, in the shoots were, were very high. And uh, similar trend uh, for, for the nymphs uh, uh, of, uh, in, in those blocks. Again, uh, high populations in the, on the grower standard compared to very low in the blocks that were, where the flushes were timed uh, on, uh, uh, sprays were timed on the, on the citrus flush. So then I will, I will show results here uh, and other study uh, that we did for several years. Uh, I have shown these results before. I will just uh, uh, show briefly because this is important. This was done to provide solutions for both organic and conventional growers uh, and provide conventional grower options that there may be some elements from the organic programs that they can integrate into their conventional program uh, to reduce the sole reliance on the conventional insecticides. So here you can see the number of sprays that were conducted in the organic programs and the number of sprays that were conducted uh, in the conventional uh, programs. Uh, there was a, generally there was a difference of uh, uh, two um, about two sprays, uh, one or two sprays more in the organic programs. Uh, than in the conventional programs, except uh, uh, in 2015, uh, when somehow the populations of uh, ACP were very high in the organic programs and uh, the total applications uh, uh, were much higher in the organic programs. Uh, it's also important to remember uh, that uh, there were three organic programs and, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, in two of the programs, uh, we were using organic insecticides in rotation uh, with horticultural mineral oil uh, or MPET, uh, which is an insecticidal soap. So that means in those programs, actually the number of uh, organic insecticides were even less compared to the number shown here because half of those applications were either oil or soap. So this data uh, show you the, the number of uh, Asian citrus adults uh, over the years uh, in those programs. Uh, and obviously uh, the most reduction was seen in the conventional program, uh, but also the organic programs, particularly the one with organic insecticides and horticultural mineral oil applications and the organic insecticides and insecticidal soap applications were providing uh, good reduction uh, as well in, in those programs. And here we were following a treatment threshold of 0.1 adults per tap sample uh, 
uh, which is very low, uh, which means one select in uh, 10 tap samples. And uh, we will make an application when our average will be 0.1 adults per tap sample in any of the programs. Uh, recent data from uh, uh, Dr. Lucas Tillensky program uh, has shown uh, that even uh, in, in these uh, uh, HLB environments, uh, even uh, a threshold of 0.5 to one uh, adults per tap sample uh, can also uh, uh, provide uh, uh, the benefits uh, in managing uh, those blocks. Uh, here, uh, of course, uh, those reductions that, that I showed in select populations were not only from the uh, insecticide use, but there were also uh, beneficial organisms, predators and parasites in those programs. Uh, spiders, lacewings, and uh, lady beetles were the groups, uh, and, and several species of those uh, were found in, in all those uh, programs. Uh, obviously, uh, the lady beetles numbers uh, are low, and, and that is uh, because uh, due to the uh, increased use of insecticides, uh, uh, the lady beetle populations were significantly suppressed uh, over the years, uh, and, and, and that's the reason that their numbers uh, now are lower compared to their number and impact uh, that we used to see uh, in the early years when, when HLB was uh, initially found in Florida. <laughs> These are the, uh, the four lady beetle species, uh, uh, Olavi nigrum, Harmonia xeridus, uh, Cyclonida singuina, Curinus corallius. Uh, I have uh, uh, shown both the adults and the larvae uh, of uh, these species. Uh, they are uh, good predators of uh, Asian citrus psyllid as well as uh, of uh, citrus leaf miner, aphids, mites, scales, mealybugs, and uh, uh, several other pests. So, uh, so conserving the populations of these predators is, is important uh, because none of these species are uh, commercially available uh, to us. And, and as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, due to the high use of insecticides uh, for several years, their populations are significantly reduced. And that's why uh, measures uh, modifying your insecticide program uh, in, in any way with timings, uh, with the products is, is important uh, so, that, so that we can provide uh, opportunities for, for these species to, to establish and increase. Uh, here you can see uh, the larva of uh, Olavi nigrum lady beetle uh, feeding on a psyllid nymph uh, and on the larva of citrus leaf miner. So as I said on the previous slide, they, they, are, uh, they attack uh, several uh, pests, in, in the, not only in the citrus crops, uh, but in the other crops as well, so they're therefore very useful. Uh, here you can see uh, adult and larvae of uh, Curinus corallis uh, feeding on Florida red scale, uh, which is another uh, important pest of citrus. Uh, although uh, in the traditional open production systems, uh, uh, it is kept uh, well under control by several of the uh, biological control agents, uh, but is it, uh, it was seen as one of the pests uh, in the citrus under uh, protective screen systems as well. And uh, I'll, I'll talk about that uh, later when I get to uh, that, uh, that part of my presentation. So lace wings are uh, another uh, group of uh, uh, predators uh, that were common, and, and we have seen them in, in several of uh, uh, our studies. And the two uh, genus, uh, Chrysoperla and Cerochrysa, are the common that we see. Uh, in some of uh, our, our projects uh, that we were doing to integrate organic and conventional insecticides uh, in different programs based on the studies that I, I just showed you uh, to develop some IPM programs, uh, we we did uh, uh, monitor the populations, estimated their uh, abundance in, in those different programs, 
and and uh, this is the example of uh, of the lace wings and and you see that there were three or uh, more species of lace wings uh, in those different uh, cellular management programs and the Saccharomyces cubana uh, these uh, green uh, bars that you see in all programs uh, were very common uh, in those programs and contributing to the mortality of Asian citrus silverweed. Uh, they are also uh, very good predators, again, of several other pests, such as aphids, white flies, uh, uh, and, and even mites or, or, or leaf mite. <clears throat> so speaking of, of uh, contributions of natural enemies uh, to the cellular mortality, uh, uh, we, we have been doing that for, for several years, starting when HLB was uh, initially found in Florida. Uh, we did uh, some studies at that time and, and found a huge impact of biological control uh, on psyllid populations. Uh, there were reductions uh, in the developing colonies of psyllid immatures uh, from 90 to 100%, uh, mainly from these uh, major groups like lady beetles, lace wings, uh, spiders and, and 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 most of those predators, uh, but again, uh, uh, like we repeatedly say, that none of these control methods alone are enough uh, to to suppress the vector uh, or and and the Huang Long Bing disease, and that's why need for working and uh, improving all these methods uh, on on a consistent basis. So so we have evaluated. Uh, uh, abundance of these predators and their contributions to the nature mortality at different times. And even more recently, uh, this is a data from uh, uh, one of the students uh, who was working on looking at the uh, psyllid colonization uh, in citrus planted at uh, different densities, as well as uh, how the biological control and chemical control uh, will function uh, in, in those uh, uh, changing densities and, and, and high, high densities as, uh, or, or, the, or the low densities. So again, as, as you see here, uh, the data shown here is uh, uh, nature mortality uh, in the eggs or names of the Asian citrus psyllid uh, found in those uh, different uh, density citrus crops. And, uh, and we did observe a mortality uh, averaging between 50% uh, uh, to up to 80% uh, in, in those uh, uh, different programs at, at different times of the year and in different years, suggesting that biological control is still a significant contributor to suppressing the cellular populations. And uh, it, it may likely improve now that we have uh, reduced the spray applications uh, uh, in, in the citrus groves compared to uh, 12 or more applications that were uh, implemented at, at one time. In terms of uh, lady beetle species, uh, we, we still have those uh, four species that I showed earlier, uh, and, and they, they are observed in different uh, studies. Uh, we can see here uh, that they were abundant in both the low and the high density plantings uh, at the lowest density. Uh, Olavinigrum uh, was the most dominant, uh, followed by uh, Curinus corallius uh, and uh, Cyclinda singuina, and then Harmonia exertus. Uh, whereas the high density Curinus corallius uh, was the uh, was the dominant, uh, followed by Olavinigrum, Harmonia, and and Cyclinda. So so it is important and, and encouraging to see that these species are around. And, and still contributing to the mortality of uh, Asian citrus psyllid. Uh, obviously, uh, as I mentioned, uh, that uh, their populations have declined. Uh, so, so one component uh, in my programs from time to time is that, that we also keep evaluating uh, some of the species that are commercially available uh, to, uh, to find out their potential uh, against the Asian citrus psyllid or, or other pests. And uh, I'll show the examples of two lady beetle species here. Uh, this is Adalia bipunctata. Uh, and you see here, uh, these bars, and uh, the white hollow bars uh, show you the number of the nymphs 
uh, that were uh, on citrus trees in the field uh, on which these lady beetles are there, uh, were caged uh, uh, to see the impact uh, uh, on the psyllid populations. And the, the dark bars inside those uh, white bars uh, show you the percentage uh, consumption or reduction in, in those <clears throat> developing colonies of, uh, of psyllid immatures. So as you see, these, these beetles were uh, consuming a huge proportion of uh, psyllid immatures uh, in those colonies. There were an average of about uh, 26 to 37 names uh, in, in those uh, developing colonies. And we observed an average reduction of 54% uh, across uh, all those uh, experiments. And this uh, lady beetle, uh, we, we, we looked at several variables and this lady beetle developed and uh, reproduced successfully on, on the psyllid diet. <clears throat> Uh, Rhizobius lofanthi is an uh, other uh, lady beetle species uh, and that we, we have tested uh, uh, recently uh, in, in some of our experiments. And uh, one of those experiments was that uh, what will be the survival of this species if, if they are uh, released in the system. And, and we know that psyllid populations are not always uniform. Uh, so we were just testing the idea that if these lady beetles are uh, provided food or, or especially uh, Asian citrusillid food uh, every seven days or every two days, so what will be the, their level of survival uh, in, in the citrus crops? And, and as you see here, that if, if they were allowed access to the food and, and there was no other food provided to them except uh, the Asian citrusillid, uh, if they were assessed, uh, if they were if they were able to assess the food in seven days, uh, then their survival was only for up to seven to 10 days. While if they were provided with the uh, salad food, uh, salad immatures every two days, then those adults were able to live for uh, a little over a month. So, so this, this just shows us that uh, there's a good potential uh, for this species to survive in citrus crops and uh, depending upon the populations of uh, Asian citrus in, in the fields. Uh, the Tamaraxia radiata, the parastride, uh, it is the primary parastride of uh, the Asian uh, citrus that was introduced uh, in Florida uh, soon after uh, the psyllid was found in the state and it's now well established. It is also mass released, uh, produced by the VNA plant industry and provided and uh, released in the environment. Uh, in those organic and conventional programs that I <coughs> excuse me, uh, mentioned earlier, uh, we were making uh, regular releases of uh, those parasites um, and, and we were finding uh, a good level of parasitism uh, in the, our untreated control as well as in the organic programs, the green bars there, uh, whereas the level of parasitism was uh, very low or negligible uh, in the conventional uh, programs uh, where the names were still available to them. So recently we have uh, also been uh, conducting some work uh, uh, under other projects to see uh, how we can adjust the releases of these parasites uh, in the environment, in the commercial groves uh, where insecticides are being spread. Uh, so obviously, if if you make a release and, and go and follow with the spray application, you are not going to get much out of uh, that release because you are going to kill uh, most of your, your parasites. But even after you make a spray application, uh, the residues of those insecticides uh, on the leaf surfaces are still uh, hazardous to the beneficial organisms. Uh, so in this slide, you see that uh, we expose the parasite uh, uh, to the leaves uh, that were treated in the field uh, with the different insecticides. Uh, uh, we, we tested uh, uh, imidacloprid, fenpropathrin, spirotetramide, 
uh, pyrethrins, uh, uh, horticultural mineral oil, uh, and we exposed uh, those residues or the leaf, treated leaves to the uh, Tamarixia radiata uh, one day after application, three days after application, and seven days after applications. Uh, and as you see here, uh, in, the, in the top graph, uh, there was a high level of mortality, 80% or more uh, in the residues from uh, fenpropathrin, which is denitol, and imidacloprid, which is Admire Pro. Uh, uh, and then uh, also from, even from uh, uh, pyrethrin, uh, which is uh, uh, organic, uh, pyrganic, uh, and horticultural mineral oil, there was still 25 to 30 percent mortality, and uh, um, 10 to 15 percent mortality uh, in uh, spirotetramet or uh, Movento uh, uh, sprays. Uh, and the same trend uh, when uh, uh, the residue residues were uh, three days old, uh, similar uh, levels of mortality in those treatments. Uh, but at seven days after application, uh, the level of mortality was significantly reduced uh, uh, to 10, uh, around 10, and, uh, an average of 10% uh, in, in all uh, those treatments. And we also looked at uh, other variables, uh, the parasitism rates of, uh, of the females uh, that were exposed uh, to the residues, or if the cellars that were there were treated and, and they were tested against the females that were not exposed to the insecticides. And from all those experiments, uh, we, we suggested that if the releases are made uh, uh, seven days after spray application, uh, the chance of survival and, and contribution of uh, and the parastar tamarixia radi radiata uh, to the cellular mortality uh, uh, will uh, likely improve. So there were some previous studies also where, where these parasites were released uh, uh, in the untreated environment, uh, such as David Hall and Eric Rohrig. Uh, they did some studies and uh, released these parasites uh, in uh, hedges of uh, orange jasmine, uh, which I mentioned in my introductory slides, is uh, uh, an important host of the Asian citrus salad and uh, available in the urban environments. Uh, so they did make releases at several locations uh, uh, and found a uh, variable level of parasitisms. Uh, and, and that's what you get with these beneficial organisms. Uh, it's, it's not an insecticide that uh, it will be a, a spray application and, and you will get uh, the same uh, effect uh, throughout because they, their existence depends upon the availability of their prey. So one of their locations, uh, uh, where no releases were made, they also found a uh, high level of parasitism. And in my program, we, we have found those instances as well. Uh, but for the area-wide programs and overall, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good uh, positive thing uh, that irrespective of which beneficial organism uh, we are talking, that they are, they are established uh, 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 in the in the environment and, and they will be contributing to the overall reduction of uh, this vector uh, population. So then uh, one of the uh, other um, uh, concept uh, that we have been uh, testing uh, recently, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that, that we need to uh, focus on how we can reduce the use of insecticides and how we can make best use of uh, chemical control and, and provide opportunities for uh, integrating biological control in, in commercial production systems. So here we were testing, uh, there were some previous evidence also uh, uh, in other crops and citrus as well, that uh, the cellulose colonization is, is likely higher uh, in, in the perimeter of the blocks uh, than in the interior of the blocks. So we were testing the, the concept that if uh, instead of treating the whole blocks, if the perimeter blocks are, uh, are spread, uh, that will uh, provide mortality for, uh, for uh, most populations of the psyllid, uh, but at the same time, 
uh, it will provide refuge for the beneficial organism, which may still be able to uh, survive and contribute uh, in the interior of the block uh, on the on the silid populations. So we uh, tested this idea in, in four uh, commercial groves, two in the Collier County and uh, two in the Henry, uh, Henry County. Uh, and I am uh, providing the combined data for the for the counties. So two groups are combined uh, uh, for each county. And uh, here uh, we are looking at the uh, suction sampling data uh, uh, on uh, the number of uh, silid adults and section samples uh, that uh, we found the silid adults in the perimeter of the blocks, uh, then in the interior of the blocks. So these data are from two years and two se seasons, uh, summer of 2021 and spring of uh, 2022. And there was definitely uh, evidence of uh, uh, higher population uh, of psyllids in the perimeter uh, than in the interior, uh, more so in the spring uh, than in the, in the uh, summer, uh, but still uh, there was a um, significant trend of uh, much higher populations in the perimeter, uh, even in, in the uh, summer uh, samplings as well. So this this uh, uh, this this suggests that maybe uh, applying uh, spray applications in the in the perimeter uh, may be useful uh, in suppressing the silid populations, especially uh, considering that uh, uh, we did not see really huge differences in the populations of uh, uh, predators such as lady beetle, lacewings. Uh, or spiders uh, between the perimeter and interior. And, and then uh, when you, we conducted the studies uh, to measure the impact uh, of, of uh, natural enemies on the natural mortality of uh, Asian citrus uh, those uh, results also indicated uh, that these predators were contributing uh, both in the perimeters and interiors. So here you can see and uh, in both uh, uh, counties, uh, this is the data from spring of 2021, uh, there were exposed colonies in the perimeter uh, and in the interior and the, the orange bars. And, and you see uh, kind of somewhat similar level of uh, natural mortality uh, in, in those colonies that were exposed uh, to the uh, natural enemies, uh, suggesting that uh, 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 of course, there is there is always some collateral damage, but also suggesting that uh, those uh, uh, those populations of beneficials uh, may may benefit from the refugia concept uh, in the interior of the of the blocks. Uh, so now uh, uh, moving to young tree uh, protection, uh, as I mentioned earlier that uh, these mini cups are individual protective covers uh, are common in the state now uh, in order to protect a young trees right from the time when they are planted uh, to be covered uh, with these, uh, these uh, IPCs uh, so that they are protected for uh, two to three years uh, uh, from uh, ACP and uh, Huang Long Bing so that they are uh, more healthy and able to tolerate uh, later, later incidences of uh, pests and diseases uh, compared to the trees that are not covered. So we, we have been doing these studies for, for the last um, three, three, two, three and a half years uh, here at uh, Southwest Florida Research uh, and Education Center. So, in, in this block, uh, these uh, the trees with the red arrows are the trees that were covered uh, with the uh, individual protective covers for, for almost uh, uh, three years uh, compared to the trees uh, next to them. Uh, a few indicated with these uh, uh, blue arrows uh, showing uh, the trees that were not covered. And, uh, and you can see the significant difference uh, in the uh, the height of those trees that were covered 
uh, the canopies of those trees, uh, the darkness uh, of uh, the color of, of the leaves and, 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 and the size. So all, all variable and, and we, we did measure the, the rootstock and cyan uh, diameters and those were all uh, double or more uh, compared to the trees uh, that were uh, not uh, covered with those IPCs. And this February of 2023 was uh, uh, when, when the yield was available uh, 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 to us. Uh, all those these trees were uh, uh, damaged significantly uh, with, uh, uh, with hurricane uh, toward the end of 2022, uh, but still we were able to collect uh, yield data. And as you can see, here uh, in February 2023, the yield in the trees that remain protected uh, with the IPCs uh, was uh, double, almost double uh, compared to the trees on the bare ground. And, and the same effects were, were uh, found uh, in, in, in the size of the trees uh, uh, as well as uh, in, the, in the fruit of the trees as well. Uh, of course, uh, uh, you need to be careful. Uh, uh, it, it's important to monitor uh, these uh, these structures uh, because uh, it, there's a likelihood of uh, pests colonizing these structures, and 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 there are different ways uh, changes in the behaviors of the pest uh, that can bring uh, some surprises to you. Uh, here I am showing you the example of one of the army worms. Uh, uh, Spodoptera latifacia, which is a garden army one. Uh, we really don't see this pest as a problem in the citrus crops. We hardly see them. Uh, but once uh, we started testing these uh, uh, IPCs, uh, we observed that these moths will come and uh, lay eggs on the outside of the screen of these IPCs. And, and these batches uh, contain eggs from 100 to 200 or more eggs of, uh, of this army one. And if any of the larvae uh, will find their way into the cages, uh, they will be able to develop uh, to these huge um, mature larvae and cause uh, significant damage uh, that can go unnoticed uh, if, if you are not careful and, and not uh, uh, monitoring your, uh, your trees. So we, we tested this, uh, this fall army worm on, on several different uh, uh, types of uh, uh, citrus, Valencia, Hamlin, Clementines, lemons, sugar bell, mineola, or even on the orange jasmine, which is a citrus relative. And, and we did find that they were able to consume uh, all those hosts effectively, uh, some uh, more uh, such as uh, uh, sugar bells and uh, uh, mineolas, uh, but also uh, Valencia oranges and Hamlet oranges, which are which are uh, more uh, common, uh, were also uh, consumed um, effectively uh, as uh, as well. And they were also able to later, uh, after feeding on on these hosts. Uh, they were able to, to go through a successful uh, pupil survival uh, to develop uh, uh, to the uh, adult stage. So not only the this uh, army worm example that I showed, uh, but but several other pests uh, such as uh, these uh, snow scales uh, could be uh, could be problems too, and it could be for several reasons. Either uh, uh, these pests can uh, enter those structures later, or if, if, if you are not careful and delay in, in protecting your trees right at planting, then if, uh, if any of those pests are able to colonize uh, those uh, plants before the IPCs are uh, placed, uh, they may be developed uh, later on uh, and, and, and go unnoticed. Uh, and, and one of the limitations, like I mentioned earlier, uh, in the traditional open production systems, there are several predators and parasites uh, that target these different pest species. Uh, and uh, that's why uh, several of them we, we don't see 
uh, in abundance, but once they are in those enclosed structures and protected from uh, all those beneficial organisms, uh, then they can uh, increase significantly. Uh, so from several trials on, on these IPCs, uh, we have seen no uh, uh, Asian citrus alert or HLB in those uh, in those <coughs> excuse me in those trees, uh, but we have seen scales, uh, millibugs, uh, mites, uh, leaf rollers, uh, and uh, garden uh, army worms. As far as, as, far as uh, uh, spraying uh, the tree defenders or IPCs, uh, we, we have done some work uh, and uh, either with the hoop sprayer or even with the sp speed sprayer, uh, when you are spraying those blocks, uh, uh, those sprays can penetrate and, and provide good coverage uh, uh, to those young trees. Uh, mainly when those, those trees are, are smaller in size, but when the canopies are grown, uh, uh, then the level of coverage is, is not uh, going to be sufficient. And if you have any pests uh, developing uh, in those structures, uh, may not be, uh, may not be uh, controlled uh, uh, effectively. Uh, we have also been um, conducting some other work uh, uh, for other means of protecting the young trees. And, and one of the ideas that uh, uh, that's around for and trying to grow the citrus trees on uh, metallized uh, reflective mulches. And the idea there is uh, that when growing on these uh, uh, ultraviolet metallized reflective mulches, uh, uh, the salad will face uh, reflection, light reflection from down below, uh, and uh, that will interfere with this vision to colonize the citrus trees and reduce uh, uh, their level of colonization. It is not a complete protection like IPCs, uh, but it definitely reduces uh, the level of uh, salad colonization on those trees, particularly during the initial and two to three years uh, uh, when the canopies are small. Uh, and uh, you can see here, uh, this is a picture from a trial here at our research center that we have been conducting for last more than three years. Uh, these trees in the background with darker canopies are the ones uh, uh, that, were, uh, that were on the UV metallized uh, reflective mulches uh, compared to here, uh, these uh, uh, yellow looking trees uh, on, on the bare uh, ground. These trials, they were uh, uh, conducted here in Immokalee, uh, as well as in the Vero Beach and uh, uh, Lake Alfred uh, area as well. I'm showing the data here from uh, Immokalee and uh, uh, Vero Beach area. Uh, <clears throat> Despite uh, reduction in the uh, salad populations, uh, which definitely contribute uh, to the salad um, but, uh, populations reduction, as well as uh, to the growth of the trees, which also probably benefit from several uh, other factors of uh, utilizing irrigation and fertigation. Uh, and overall, uh, the trees. Uh, on on the mulches uh, uh, showed larger diameters of both rootstock and cyan. Here you are looking at uh, Swingal and Valencia uh, at the Immokalee location, and then you are looking at grapefruit, US 897 rootstock and ruby red on, on that rootstock. And the blue bars are the diameter uh, of the trees on uh, mulch and the orange bars are the diameter of the trees uh, on the bare ground. So definitely uh, those trees uh, benefit from growing on, on metallized reflector mulches. Uh, this year was our, uh, our first real first year to get uh, some good data. Uh, yield data, these trees started to reproduce. 
uh, produce uh, yield, but unfortunately, uh, all locations were uh, badly uh, damaged by the uh, hurricane last year, end of uh, 2022, uh, and uh, there was significant damage to the trees, uh, but we were still able to get uh, uh, data on uh, uh, Vero Beach uh, location on the grapefruit and uh, Valencia ranges here in the Mopli. Uh, the effects in the yields are reflected uh, in, in, in the grapefruit. Uh, uh, there were a uh, number of fruits that were collected per tree were uh, double uh, on, in the trees that were on the mulch uh, compared to the, to the bare ground. Uh, and the number of fruit dropped in the trees on the mulch was less compared to the trees on the bare ground. So overall, uh, there was benefit in the yield uh, in terms of number of fruit uh, per tree, uh, although that effect uh, is not yet uh, evident uh, in Valencia oranges here in uh, Imaki. So now uh, moving to the uh, larger cups or citrus under protective screen. Again, the idea of these structures is to grow citrus free of uh, Asian citrus salad and Huanglong bean, and uh, it's being done successfully uh, for uh, uh, several years, uh, mainly in, in, in grapefruits and, and fresh uh, citrus crops. Uh, and uh, um, it's uh, it's a good system, um, uh, definitely, uh, and it's being uh, adopted, uh, particularly for the fresh citrus crops. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, right now there are 1,000 to 1,500 acres of citrus uh, under uh, these structures. Uh, uh, we have studied uh, these stru structures uh, in the Indian River. Uh, area at the there are four of these cup structures uh, about quarter acre each at the Indian River Research and Education Center uh, with their respective uh, open air uh, control uh, and and these are planted with the uh, rare ruby grapefruits uh, there were uh, two rootstocks and uh, two planting systems uh, in those uh, structures. So I'm just showing data here for two years uh, uh, to give you the idea that outside those structures uh, in the open air blocks, the cellular populations were uh, very high, uh, averaging from uh, uh, one to uh, up to six cellulites per uh, sticky cart. And as you can see in both here uh, with these columns uh, uh, showing the high populations, uh, and uh, down below, you can see uh, that there were a few or, or no psyllid in the cups. And, and uh, also, once in a while, we will see uh, psyllids, uh, one or two psyllids captured on the sticky cards in the cups. Uh, and th that could happen, uh, particularly when, when the cups are damaged by a storm. Uh, and, and the populations uh, get a chance to move in. Or there is also traffic. Uh, uh, people coming in and out of those cups for different reasons and, and, and there is a chance of introduction uh, through through those uh, uh, channels as well. Uh, these cups, uh, are, of course, like I said, uh, uh, they, uh, for several years, if you look at the, the top figure, 2014, 15, and 16, uh, the first four bars, uh, from the left to right, the, they should be in a blue color, but uh, they are there are none there. So that means there were no psyllids. Uh, so the first psyllid that was found in 2017 uh, when Hurricane Irma uh, damaged the cups. And then later on, uh, there were uh, some more storms and, and, and then some more psyllids were recorded. Uh, but again, uh, a very few and, and those were eliminated and uh, never really translated into cellular establishment in the cups, except after Hurricane Irma 
and, and those infestations were removed uh, manually and, and with the spray application. And because of that, the psyllid population is not really establishing and the consistent source of uh, feeding and transmitting the pathogen. Uh, there was no HLB. Uh, if you see these blue bars, uh, using a CT value threshold of 32, uh, these values are very high. These levels are very high for the CT values, indicating uh, that uh, the HLB uh, was uh, uh, at, at that uh, level or uh, threshold level, uh, it, it was not present. And, and we really did not see any obvious symptoms or, or effects in terms of uh, uh, later developments in the tree canopy or, or later effects on the fruit. Uh, whereas if you see uh, the green bars uh, starting uh, 2016, so that was about two to three years of those young trees, uh, yeah, uh, but without protection of, of cups, uh, the CT values, they were all uh, highly uh, significant uh, indicating the high incidence of uh, of uh, HLB uh, in, in those uh, trees that were not uh, protected. So those cups, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, it, it's shown that uh, the HLB uh, and ACP can be eliminated uh, using those structures and uh, successful uh, grapefruit production was uh, was possible, uh, but uh, we we did find several other pests uh, in in those uh, those structures, uh, uh, which include uh, uh, citrus leaf miner, uh, scales, uh, thrips, uh, mealybugs. Uh, I, I mentioned and and mites, and I mentioned earlier. Uh, uh, it, it, it is interesting that the Florida red scale. It was only found in, in the cups environment and it was not found in the uh, open uh, blocks uh, that were used as, as a control. So it, it seems that the environment in the cups uh, may, be, uh, may be suitable uh, for some of, some of the pests if they are able to enter in the cups for them to establish uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, grow more. Uh, of course, uh, uh, their level uh, of uh, existence in the cup was not as high as in the outside. Uh, for example, for citrus leaf miner, uh, uh, we were using pheromone traps to, to you know, capture their uh, adult populations uh, and, the, and the populations were uh, uh, reduced uh, by more than 80% in the cups uh, compared to the, to the outside environment. And, and same uh, with, the, with the other pests, uh, the, the, their populations were uh, uh, not uh, widespread. Uh, although mites uh, are, are one group of pests uh, uh, that were consistent problem, uh, both the rust mites and uh, citrus red mites in, in, in those structures, and, and we found them uh, consistently. Uh, the, the encouraging thing is that uh, for most of these uh, uh, these pests, uh, several of the parasites uh, were found uh, in the cup structures. So there were several species for the citrus leaf miner, uh, for the scales, uh, and, and even for the millibug that we found in the cup systems. Obviously, their level was uh, not as high as in the outside environment, uh, but it was encouraging and also a good evidence to show that these and these species, these beneficial organisms, uh, are able to survive in those cups environment and 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 have potential uh, to be used in the biological control in those environments. Uh, of course, uh, larger predators are, are protected uh, from entering uh, the cups uh, systems, uh, but we did find. Uh, several species of uh, predatory lady beetle, uh, predatory mites uh, that are good predators of pest mites and, and some of the other pests as well. Uh, and and we, we found several species in the, in the cups environment. 
So here we are looking at the populations of citrus rust mites uh, on grapefruit leaves in the in the cups. And uh, generally, uh, this mite species was more abundant in the outside open air environment than in the cups, um, but they were definitely found in the cups environment uh, uh, most of the time. And uh, uh, in May of uh, 2018, their populations were actually high. And uh, I also want to mention that uh, several spray applications were made in these cup structures. And those maintenance sprays were uh, made for mites uh, and, and some other pests or, or, or diseases as well. Uh, for citrus red mite, uh, uh, the situation was different. Uh, this species was more abundant uh, in the cups environment uh, than in the open air, as you can see, uh, the solid bar uh, for the cups and uh, the, the blue you know, dotted bar for the open air and uh, the population's peaks were observed uh, in, in fall, uh, spring and, and, and summer in the cups environment. And, uh, and the same for, for the 2019 and uh, 2020 cycle. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we found several species. There were about 10 species of uh, uh, predatory mites uh, that were found uh, between the two production systems. Uh, and there were two uh, dominant species, uh, Amblyceus uh, tematavensis and uh, Tiflodramus perigrinus. Uh, they were abundant uh, uh, in both cups and uh, open air uh, environment. Uh, in the cups, uh, uh, Amblyceus tematavensis and uh, Triflodramus perigrinus, uh, their abundance was almost equal. Uh, there were about only 3% of most species uh, in there. Uh, uh, in the open air environment, uh, 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 Triflodramus perigrinus was uh, more abundant uh, compared to the, uh, to the cups environment, and uh, whereas uh, Tematavensis was less compared to the cups environment. Uh, and we know from uh, my previous studies uh, that uh, uh, in the open environment, uh, Triflodramus benefits from the ground cover uh, vegetation, and that could be one factor for its abundance uh, in the open environment compared to cups, uh, where that was uh, uh, not available. So overall, uh, uh, we have observed that foliar sprays of insecticides and uh, time to citrus flushing uh, provided a significant reduction in cellar populations uh, compared to the grower standard. Uh, so that could be a tactic uh, that can be used for reducing cellar populations uh, and the insecticide use. And a significant effect of organic insecticides and 435 oil on cellar control and uh, yield. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned or not, but uh, one of the organic programs uh, with uh, organic insecticides and the horticultural mineral oil provided yields equal to the conventional program or even better in one year. So there is a opportunity for using these in, uh, products uh, for organic growers and uh, also for their use in the developing the IPM programs uh, in citrus in general, uh, reduced use of uh, conventional insecticides uh, help to conserve and augment biological control. And, and we have seen that even with the border spray, that opportunity exists. And uh, reducing the conventional insecticide use also helps with reducing the uh, secondary pest outbreak, uh, pesticide resistance, and uh, residue issues. 
And uh, with our uh, several of our recent studies, uh, uh, we still believe biological control to be a significant component of uh, uh, psyllid management. Uh, IPCs and cups protected citrus from ACP and HLB, uh, but other pests uh, such as leaf miners, scales, thrips, uh, millibugs, armyworms, and mites were detected in those structures. So monitoring is a key both for the protected and, and traditional open production systems uh, for making uh, a timely uh, decisions on, on pest management. Uh, with that, uh, I would like to thank uh, our state and uh, uh, federal sources of uh, funding, uh, our growers and industry uh, for allowing us to conduct research and contributing. Uh, several of my lab members, the staff, uh, postdocs, and the students, uh, and the several collaborators on, on, on these different projects. And uh, thank you very much for your uh, attention. Dr. Qureshi, you have a question um, from Marcio. He wants to know, is there any relationship found or proved between citrus trees with adequate levels of calcium in their leaves and greater resistance to facelid attack? Uh, I have not uh, conducted those studies. And so I, I am not aware of that. It is Thank well you. known. It is well known that optimum nutrition in general, increases the tolerance to pests and diseases. And even some proponents of plant nutrition, they believe that nutrition stimulates the defense mechanism of plants. But, yeah, that, that's true. But uh, in, in some situation, it's also important to remember that if, if the nutritional programs, they are... Uh, promoting the tree growth, uh, like for instance, for, uh, for uh, and if, 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 if there is more flush and there is more growth, um, and uh, then it's, it's, it's a possibility that, that it will provide opportun more opportunities for psyllids to reproduce and, uh, and increase their populations as well. Any other questions? Thank you again, Dr. Qureshi. For those who need CEUs, please send me an email and include your name, your email address, and your license number. Thank you, Alison. Thank you, Manji, Alison, and it's everybody. It's my pleasure. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.